Hey everybody, Will from Studio Zombie 3D here. Today, we're going to take another look at calibrating the Anycubic Viper. We're going to start by checking the belts and the wheels. Then, we're going to move on to calibrating the E-steps and flow, and also the linear advance. Alright, let's get right into it. Alright, first thing we're going to do is take a look at the belt on the bed. The Viper is really nice because they have tensioners installed. As you can see, the belt is pretty loose here. So I'm going to start by tightening it up a little bit. Give it a couple turns and plug the belt. It should almost sound like a guitar string when it's just right. Alright, as we can tell by the sound, it's pretty good. We'll leave it at this and give it a try. Make sure the bed rolls and moves smoothly afterwards. Let's take a look at the X-Belt now. Now the X-Belt's a little harder to check for tightness. What I like to do is move the hot end as I'm tightening. You'll feel a bit of tension on it as you move. You don't want too much and you don't want too little. Alright, let's move into the bed wheels. As you can see, there's a bit of movement on here. On the right side bottom, you can see two concentric nuts. You're going to want to tighten this while moving the bed. You don't want to over tighten as it can cause wear and damage to the wheels. You want to tighten it just until the wobble stops. Once the wobble stops, give it just a touch more turn. You'll also notice that the wheels won't turn as well if it's too tight. Alright, that looks and feels pretty good. Let's move on. Next up, we're going to take a look at the hot end wheels. I loosened this already so you can see the wobble. The concentric nut is located on the bottom wheel. Just tighten it as you're moving the hot end to make sure the wobble goes away. As soon as there's no more wobble, just give it a little touch more. Alright, let's get to the calibration. Alright. First thing you're going to want to do, if you haven't already, is download Pronterface from the Print Run website. I'll place a link in the description. Download the version for your PC. I use Windows, so I'll download the bottom link. Once you have it downloaded, we're going to unpack the folder and place it on the desktop for easy access. Alright, once that's done downloading, just extract it to the desktop. Next thing we're going to do is mark our filament and do our E-step test. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is measure 100 millimeters back from the bone tube going into the extruder. Then we're going to extrude 100 millimeters using Pronter phase and measure the distance between the mark and the bone tube. Let's jump over to Pronter phase. Alright, this is the interface of Pronter phase. Up here is our connection options. Down below we have our control, temperatures, and our speed. Up top, make sure the baud rate is 115200. On the right we have our terminal. Alright, click on the port button and then click on connect. The printer is now connected as you can see on the right side. Next thing we're going to do is send an M503 to list the firmware settings. We're looking for the E-steps up top, right here and it's 415 when it's dock. Next thing we're going to do is set 100 millimeters for the extrude and then heat up the hot end to 200 degrees. Now, it'll take a few minutes for the nozzle to hit temperature. Next thing we're going to do, once it hits temperature, is we're going to extrude 100 millimeters. All right, next, click on extrude. All right. Here we are back at the printer watching it extrude. It'll do it fairly slowly. So after it's done extruding, it'll pass through the filament sensor and end up between the sensor and the Bowden tube. And there it is. Next, we're going to take a measurement. And this right now is about 2 millimeters. Alright, now we're going to jump back to the computer, put in 100, divide it by 98, and then multiply it by our E-steps, which we found earlier, right here, which is 415. 
And here we are, 423.4. That's going to be our new E-steps. So we're going to send an M92 space E and then our new E-steps of 423. Hit enter and then send an M500 to save. Next, send an M503 and double check that it's saved. And here we are. Now, you can extrude 100 millimeters again just to double check, but you should be pretty much dead on now. And here we go, just feeding it through, waiting for it to come through the center. And here comes our mark. And there it is, right at the tube. Perfect. The next thing we're going to do now is jump into Cura and slice a 0.8 test cube for the flow. Be sure to set your flow to 100% on all of your options. Right here. 100 on a flow, 100 on support, infill, and initial layer. Now. We're going to save this and then print it off on our Viper. You can print off the SD or Octoprint, whatever choice you want. All right, our cube is finished printing, so let's pull it off the printer and measure the walls with a set of calipers. All right, so. We're going to average the four walls. All right, back at the computer, let's figure out our flow. Enter 0 0.80 and divide by your result, which mine was a 0 0.85. And that gives us 0 0.94. So our flow is going to be 94%. I personally like to set the infill and the top bottom flow about 2% higher as well as the initial layer flow, just to help it stick to the bed. All right, now our flow is done. Now we can move over to our linear advanced calibration. Now, on the K-Factor calibration page, enter the printer name, change the nozzle temperature to 200, bed temperature 60, I set my retraction to 3, layer height to 0 0.2, and then enter your bed dimensions. 250 by 255. Next, the printing speeds can stay the same. The retract speed is set to 40, as well as the unretract speed. Acceleration I have set to 800. Next, under the pattern, we're going to use the standard pattern, starting value of 0, and then ending value of 1. Next, change the k-factor stepping to 0.25. Also, print the anchor frame. It helps the print to stick and you can see the lines clearer. The rest of the options can stay the same. Now, give it a file name and click Generate G-Code. Next. Here's your G-code. Just download the file and print it on the Viper. And here we are with our pattern. For my printer, 0.4 to 0.45 seem to print the best. You may need to increase it once you start printing, though. And here we are back over at printer face. We're looking for the M900 line right here. So send M900 space K 0 0.45 in my case. Then we're going to send an M500 to save and then an M503 to double check. And here we are, it's saved. Now, the last option we're going to set is junction deviation. It replaces a jerk right up here, the M205 line. I've tried various numbers and I find J0.05 work really well. So we're going to send an M 
205 space J 0.05. Then we're going to send an M500 to save and an M503 to double check. And scroll up and here we are, J0.05. Now we're ready. All right, I printed a test cube just to see how things are looking. And it's looking pretty good. You may need to increase linear advance a little bit just to help get rid of the rest of the bulging. But this cube looks pretty good. It's nice and sharp. There's no gaps. And we're in a pretty good starting position with our Viper now. All right, everybody. That's my V2 calibration video. All right, that's it. And as always, subscribe and hit that like button, everybody. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out our Studio Zombie 3D Instagram to see what's going on in the studio. Also, be sure to check out our GL Robotics channel partner in the links below. Thanks, everybody, and see you in the next video.